Um, early days of Palantir, going in into these meetings with you know, the CIA and, and big government organizations. Were you in these meetings or did you send, you mentioned Yeah, no, it was Stefan and me and then Carp and then we both, the three of us kind of ran stuff for the first few years on the business side as well. I, I was head of product but then I shifted over to head of business and I, I replaced myself as someone who's way better than me but yeah, the first few years I was doing a lot of these and it's, 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 uh, I mean, it's really, really hard dealing with big institutions. There's all sorts of tricks to the trade. There's another reason why you need probably people who have done it before or who understand these things. But I mean, big institution, it turns out like one thing that didn't, was not intuitive to like the 21 year old version of me is it really matters like how you're introduced and, and who they think you are. So it's like one thing I think I, I thought like, gosh, I have this thing that they need and I'm gonna walk in the door and show them and shouldn't the world just work where if they need it and it's helpful to them, they're gonna, they're gonna listen. And it turns out that's not at all how the world works. It turns out that if I'm introduced by like the former head of the CIA who, who in, in the right way, then it's, and, and who's like looked at it, and they got to be way more seriously than if I'm introduced by like the older brother of a friend who used to work, you know, who works there or whatever, right? So, so it's, like, it's like there's all these subtle status things about how you come across. There's all these subtle things about how you, about, about how you present the company, you present yourself. Like government people, what I think this is true of like most big institutional people, there's a dialectic there where they, one, they really want to be feeling like they're on the cutting edge, but then they also really want to feel like it's safe and like it's proven and like someone else has done this already. So when we ended up closing our first pilots, like CARP figured out a way to like make the FBI think the CIA was already moving ahead and make the CIA think the FBI is already moving ahead and they both felt like more safe and they were jealous the other guy was going first and they, and they both did it, you know. Wow. So it's like, it's like there's all these like, it's really stupid because there's like, there's like their actual substance of the business, which does matter, but then there's also all these subtle things about how human institutions work that are very, they're just, people are complicated beings, they're not always logical, right? What was the customer discovery process there like? You guys knew that there was a problem with, with data in these organizations, or as you started talking to them, you started, you know, pivoting what, whatever software you were building. What was the first software you built? How was that? Yeah, and I wouldn't recommend building companies like this normally. I think, I think with Adapar it was a lot more logical where we had early customers using it and iterating with us. With Palantir, you couldn't really get early customers using it, so you had to go just talk to them, and you had to see what their objections would be, see what they wanted, see what the requirements were. So what we did, I think there's one of the early years when we started doing this, there was a period of about 12 months where I had 26 round trip flights on JetBlue to DC. That was, that was before JetBlue had business class, by the way. So it's like, it's like you're back and forth, back and forth economy. And, uh, and we would just, every two weeks, every week and a half, we'd go out and we'd show them like the latest we'd done and we'd get their feedback and we'd talk about it and we'd see what they wanted, what they cared about. And, we, and, and then we'd go back and we'd just like iterate and code and build as fast as we could and create, and create something that was based on what they said and to try to make them feel like they had ownership over it, make them feel like they're part of the process and then impress them with how quickly we're building. And then, and then eventually after iterating a bunch with all these different people, we got to the point where, where they didn't really have objections and they were, they were willing to try it out. With everything going on with uh, right now with controversy in terms of data handling, I'm guessing handling government data was probably something very sensitive uh, back then and now. How'd you guys get? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean even now, a lot of what Palantir does is not in the cloud. Back then there was no cloud, right? It was 2004. This is before the idea of the cloud. And so we built, we, built, we built our own version of what we would be now be called an internal cloud for them. We created, created that uh, as, as an idea as a lot of ours did at the time. And, and uh, yeah, you just, you just had, to be, had to be on premise. We had to get people who had top secret, you know, compartmentalized security clearance. It's a mess. I mean, dealing with the government is a whole nother level of of just obnoxiousness when, when it comes to these things. So yeah, it was, it was a lot of work. I, I, I do think that, I do think a lot of things in the world are broken because people are too like careful with all the rules around data. Like if, you, if you're a big, if you're a startup and you're trying to work with the Fortune 500, there's oftentimes it's just like six months of just like extra work, right? There's like these security audits you have to get ready to go through. You have to hire people who know how to deal with the security audit. It's just like, it's a whole set of things that are very difficult to go through if you're going to be working with the really big companies or the government on these things. So it doesn't mean you can't build things in that area. It does mean you better have people who know what they're doing working with you if you're going to go after these types of customers. Uh, how many employees did uh, Palantir grow up to be while you were there? Um, while I was there, I don't know. I kind of transitioned out slowly after six years. I'm still an advisor, so I don't really have like a hard point in my mind because I started building out of par in like five and a half years in in like 09. But, but I think it was probably like, a, probably like four, three, four hundred when I stopped being full time. And I think it's about 2,200 now. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's secret.